It is week five, believe it or not, of our Northwoods History Museums tours for our How We Got Here series. And many of these museums may be known for one thing. And the Vilas Historical Museum directly behind me is certainly known for the first ever snowmobile. We're gonna learn more about that snowmobile and all the other things that this museum has to offer. Let's go. Okay, let's start our tour of the Vilas Historical Museum. I'm with our tour guide, Buckshot Anderson. Buckshot, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, glad and to I, be here. And I gotta say off the bat, we are with a freshwater fishing hall of famer in our midst, so we are in good company today. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Let's first start with outside the museum. We have a couple things behind us. Let's start with this Paul Bunyan and his ox. What's that? Well, we got him about 10, 12 years ago, and I think it's probably the biggest eye catcher in town. As you, as you come into Saner from the south, you can't help uh, uh, seeing him. And of course, he's a legend in the, all the Northwoods, all across where the big pine was cut. And uh, stories about him go on and on and on. And just behind that, we have a boat with some significance. What is that about? All right, this is a motor launch that was used on Plum Lake uh, to, to distribute the mail and to take uh, the vacationing guests to the resorts back in the uh, 19, early 1900s all the way up into the 30s. Okay, so and, rich resort history up here oh in yes. Saner, right? Yeah. So uh, one of the finest resorts up here was uh, uh, Saner Lodge, which was started in uh, 1893. Wow, okay, so very rich history. And you were telling me earlier, your family has rich history up here. You moved to the area just across the street just from St. Germain, right? Just across the street, right? basically, yeah, 1939. Yeah. Okay, and I think the people at home are wondering, why Buckshot, why is that your nickname? Well, when I was born, I only weighed five pounds, two ounces, and I haven't got too much bigger except in the middle. And the neighbor walked over to see the new kid on the block, looked in the crib, and told my mother, hell, he ain't no bigger than Buckshot. Well, I'm glad that nickname is stuck because it's a memorable one. We're about to go inside the museum. Okay. Just tell us generally what is in there. What's the history of the museum? The history goes back to 1969 when we, we opened the doors. And uh, it's just grown from being one, one small building to four buildings. And people look at it from the road and say, well, there can't be very much in there. But they don't realize there's buildings behind this. And we have everything, I guess you'd say, from soup to nuts. Awesome. Well, we're about to experience everything from soup to nuts. We're going to go in in just a second. We'll be right back in Up North F4. We're continuing our tour of the Vilas Historical Museum, and you can't not do a tour without looking at the world's first ever snowmobile buckshot. Tell me about the history of this thing. All right, this uh, was built by a gentleman named Carl Ellison, who was one of the uh, uh, founding fathers of the community, you might say, and the family still lives here. Uh, they own the uh, lumber company and hardware store. And Mr. Ellison, who had a uh, little difficulty navigating in his older years, decided he would make something that he could sit and ride on. So what we have here is a two and a half horsepower engine off a Johnson outboard motor from 1924, uh, one third of a Model T uh, uh, radiator for cooling, uh, two skis, a couple of bicycle chains, and odds and ends bolts, and he put it all together and had it patented in 1927. And he went on to make 30 of them. He charged $360 a piece for them, and uh, eventually he was bought out by North Star, which later on became Polaris. Wow, what an incredible history started right here in Saner, Wisconsin. I have to say, uh, the turning mechanism has improved, I think, over the years. But man, what a, what ingenuity coming from Mr. Ellison. Yes, he was a remarkable man, a very generous man, and uh, uh, everybody liked him. And uh, I say the family is still here, his uh, grandchildren, and uh, his his son just passed away short shortly time ago. So I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. Well, let's talk about what's behind us, because this is just one of many, many snowmobiles you have in here. Is, are there any of these that you want to highlight as well? Well, there, you just have to walk around and take a look and, and, and read what's on them. They've got little, little posters on all of these. Uh, the vast majority of these were donated to us. Uh, we did purchase several. 
Uh, the, the gentleman who kind of takes care of this is our, our oldest member of our board, Dr. Backer from uh, Wausau, but he has a summer home here. He's the custodian of this area and, and the caretaker of it. And uh, he, he knows everything about everyone in here. Uh, but uh, I say on, on all the machines, there's a little poster that tells you all about them from the age and how we got them and so on. So if you want the definitive history of snowmobiling, this is definitely the place to go. Yeah, and this is definitely the men's favorite place to stop. Okay, well, let's actually go to the ladies' favorite well, place next, if you don't mind, Buckshot. Well, okay. We're going to do that next time on the History Tour. We'll be right back. We're back on our tour of the Vilas Historical Museum, still here with Buckshot Anderson. Living legend, might I add. <laughs> Buckshot, we were in, as you say, the men's area back in the snowmobile part. Now, as you say, we're in the ladies' area. Tell us what's behind us. Well, this is the doll collection, as you can see, and there's a, quite, a, quite a number here. I don't know if Nancy uh, ever counted them, but uh, there's probably several hundred. Uh, again, most of them were donated to us. Uh, grandmas, uh, mothers, uh, even little kids uh, donated their teddy bear. We even got a Charlie McCarthy down here. Uh, th there's everything that you can think of, of all uh, uh, different styles from the eras, uh, joking ones, uh, sock dolls, uh, Christmas dolls. Uh, they're all here, and this is the, the very favorite hangout for the, for the young kids. When they first come in, they go, oh, look at all the dolls. And sometimes they'll stay here for quite a while just looking. And uh, that's why we got it rope, roped off. <laughs> that's fair. I see Wizard of Oz. I see a lot of Raggedy Ann and Raggedy Andy. Uh, let's talk about what's maybe down the hall from us. OK, we have uh, clothing, mo mostly women's clothing from here down to the, to the next room that opens up, plus some furniture from uh, long ago, uh, and a little, little bit of everything, pictures, uh, scrapbooks, uh, you name it, it's here. It, it, it'll take you, probably if you want to really take your time, it's going to take you three hours to go through this museum. OK, so carve out some time for this room and all the other rooms at the Vilas County Historical Museum. I think we should head into the animal room next time. So okay. we'll do that next time. We'll be right back. We're back on our history tour of the Vilas Historical Museum. Buckshot, I've been really amazed by the diversity of items you have here. We've seen snowmobiles, we've seen dolls. Now we're in a room full of animals. Tell me about this room. Well, this was built uh, by uh, one of the uh, donors here and longtime residents of the community, the Fralick family, which moved into Saner in 1895. Uh, Jim was one of the sons who was a, a, a outdoorsman, fisherman, hunter. And what you're seeing behind is what we call the, the grand slam of uh, North American uh, uh, sheep. And he uh, bagged all of these and donated them to the museum along with the room that we're standing in. Uh, his uh, family still, still lives in town like uh, many of the early settlers. And uh, he was on the board of directors here for a while as was his uh, uh, sister. And uh, we, get, we owe a lot to the, the Fralix just for helping to keep this museum going and, and growing. Yeah, it seems like you have a lot of really strong supporters here at the museum, which is yes. neat to see. Yes. And I just want to highlight a couple other things I'm seeing. I'm seeing moose, I'm seeing caribou, grizzly bears, and we have birds over here. So a lot to see in this animal room. Anything else you want to say about nope, what's in but here? No, just about anything that, uh, that flies or crawls or runs is in this room, probably. Okay, well, let's end our tour next time. I think we should head to the tool room, if that's okay with that's you. That's fine, okay, yes. Okay, let's right. do that. We'll do that next time on our tour of the Vilas County Historical Museum. Okay, our last day of the tour here at the Vilas Historical Museum. Buckshot, what are we looking at here? We're looking at, uh, my dad used to call these the tools of ignorance, all hand tools, jokingly. Uh, from the lumbering era, this whole area right here is the axes, saws, uh, PVs are called, uh, cant hooks, uh, you name it, they're here, brush hooks. All of them had a special uh, purpose for whatever had to be done. 
The big broad heads here were for, for hewing off the tops of the logs for log homes. Um, the double bit axe, or the one with the double blade on it, that was the favorite of the lumberjacks for notching the trees. And then we have this one man and two man saws over here. And then a couple of ice, ice cutting saws down there at the end where they sawed the blocks of ice for refrigeration. So there's a couple things I haven't seen here before. This is the longest screw I think I've ever seen. What do you think that was used for? I think that might, I'm not sure myself, but I think that might have been for going into these big uh, uh, ancient white pines to get a, the, the, how, many, how old it was. Oh, That's the wow. only thing I can guess. Hmm, okay. Well, let's look at these as well. I'm not familiar with all these kind of blocks over here. Although they're hand planes, wooden with the blades out, and you could set them, and uh, they're very heavy. Very awkward to use, and uh, of course, after the stainless steel and the steel came out, they became obsolete. But uh, uh, every carpenter had several of those in his in his trunk, which uh, made quite a load. Hmm. Well, even in this room, I see so many different things. I see some sports memorabilia. I see an old barber shop display. Is there anything else that you want to focus on in this room, Buckshot? No, there's, a, there's so much again, like I say, you've you got to take your time. Like there's chainsaws here, there's, uh, like you say, carriages, an old barber shop way back here at the end that used to be in Saner. Uh, it just goes on and on. Well, I will say Buckshot Anderson is an author as well. You can find some of his, some of his books here at the museum. He's written about wide range of topics. Also, as I mentioned, a Hall of Fame freshwater fisher. Anything else you want to say, Buckshot? No, I just enjoyed it, and thank you for coming and supporting our cause. Of course. Well, yes. thank you again, and everyone at home, definitely check out the Vilas Historical Museum. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm.